here, buddy. Check it out. What do you think? Is it big enough? This is Stan the Man. Stan the Man. But you have to check. They're gonna be spoiled rotten, stupid spoiled. Mama already is obsessed with you. Daddy loved you before I even got off the plane. Oh, yeah, big yawn and I'm asleep. <laughs> yep, we finally got a new puppy and let me tell you guys, he is freaking adorable that I just can't take it. So obviously his new dog house is gonna have to match his personality, which is out of this world. And this build is going to be a little structurally unique, so I decided that I'm gonna include a free set of plans for it over on my website in case any of you guys wanna build one for your puppy. And that's linked down below. After ripping some two by fours into two by twos to keep down on the weight, I cut out a piece of half inch plywood to match that and secured it using glue and exterior grade screws. Fella, jump! Thing is big enough for the both of them. Right, baby girl? All right, so the platform is big enough not only for Stanley, but also for his big sister, Stella. And now we can start laying out the walls. Because I'm building this on the fly and constantly changing the design and including two by fours where three inch screws won't reach, using pocket holes came in real handy. And I typically wouldn't use pocket holes when framing a structure, but everything is going to be tied with glued plywood inside anyways and siding on the outside. So I'm not concerned about the structural integrity here. By the time we're done with this thing, it's gonna be able to withstand a Chicago storm. After securing the two side walls to the platform, I started working on the front of the doghouse. This is the one that's gonna have the front door and the windows. And with these windows, I'm trying to do something that I've never done before. More about that a little bit later in this video. But for right now, I'm just trying to get the framing correct so I have consistency across the front and the side. And on the back side, I wanted to include a full size door. Well, full size for a doghouse. That way I can get in it if I ever need to clean it. So I just ran a two by two on the bottom and a two by four on the top, and then called in for the puppy inspection. Okay, we go for a ride. Watch your toesies. It's gonna have your name on the front, maybe even a picture of you, and a swimming pool. Next, I moved on to the roof, which for me is probably the most important part of this build because I don't want this thing to be just the roof. I also want it to be a hangout area for the puppies and an agility course for Stella. Yeah, we need to go higher. After setting down my first set of rafters, I looked at the design and decided it needed a second tier to the roof uh, to make it a little bit more interesting. So I added a couple of blocks to the wall line to elevate it and traced out my bird's mouth on a two x four and cut it out with my jigsaw. And then I realized that I didn't put any soffits on this entire build. So I added a block to the outside rafter and mounted it all as one piece. Then I could secure that second tier of rafters to the original ones and attach the roof to the doghouse using hurricane ties. building out the soffits to the bottom portion of the roof, I could attach the fascia board all the way around and also added some two by four wedges to follow that second tier roof line on the back side. This will create a little step for the puppies and give more surface area on that top tier. And I think that's going to be the, hey, I'm chilling up here, leave me alone area for the puppies, but who knows? It's their doghouse and they can use it any way they want. There we go. I think that's the roof right there. They're gonna like it. And I think it's it's gonna do perfect for the puppies because they get you're gonna have a ramp there. They can jump up here, lay up here, whatever. Man, I want a little doghouse. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, we got a dog house. It's more like a dog amusement park than a dog house. Holes are okay. With the doghouse frame all done, I can move on to making that back access door. And I'm gonna be using some old bed slats for my daughter's bed. She got a new one and I needed to incorporate a recycled material into this build because this is part of the build a doghouse, save a dog challenge, where makers come up with cool designs for their favorite puppy and build dog houses with a few rules, of course. Number one, it's got to be able to fit a dog. It's a dog house, right? Number two, it has to have some sort of roof or shaded area for the puppy. Number three, use a recycled material in your build. Doesn't matter what it is. And number four, incorporate a water feature, which I think is gonna be a lot of fun for everyone to come up with. And there's people who've released their videos already on YouTube, and I mean, there's a dog cabana and a dog house with a fish tank. Just incredible stuff, which just blows my mind. So if you guys wanna see all the unique builds, you can head over to buildadoghousesaveadog.com and you can vote for your favorite doghouse. The doghouse with the most votes will have to put out a free set of plans to their build if they have not already done so. It's a really great way to show your support for your favorite maker and to help save a dog in need. And you can also make a donation. That's right, you can give all of your money to a puppy in need. All proceeds go to No Dogs Left Behind, an organization that fights against cruelty of animals and saves puppies all over the world. So if you can help, that's awesome. If not, don't worry about it. I still love you and I'm gonna give you free plans anyways. All right guys, so time to dress this dog house up and make it look really cool. And what I'm going for is a, a modern look almost like an industrial building, right? With these large panels to make it stand out, you know, from your typical dog house. And typically when you see large panels on a commercial building, it's gonna be like a fiber cement board. But I have a project that I need to use these PVC panels in and it's gonna be outside. So I'm gonna test it on this dog house. And they do have a wood texture side, but I'm gonna use the flat side to make it look, you know, industrial. That's the theme, industrial. After ripping the panels in half, I took them over to my router table to create a rabbit on one side. Then I adjusted my fence further out by one eighth of an inch and ran the opposite side through it. This is going to make one of the grooves smaller than the other, and when stacked in the right order, they're going to overlap each other, giving me a one eighth inch reveal, allowing for water to run down. Yep, we're pretty much making nickel gap siding. It's like shiplap, but has that cool reveal and is still watertight. That's the important part. This is a spare table for my table saw. And I have no use for it. Figured make a really good dog bed. All I gotta do is just cut it. Recycle, recycle, recycle. That was a puppy, I like it. With the interior of the doghouse finished, we can prep for the siding installation by wrapping the doghouse with a house wrap. It shields the interior of the house from air and water penetration, and you probably have some form of it on your house right now. So the puppies are gonna get it too. Next, I can cut the PVC siding to size at my table saw. I set my fence to 45 degrees and cut each panel to size. This was a back and forth process, cutting it, measuring it up against the house, cutting it again, until all the miters lined up perfectly. Then I can nail them in place with a brad nail, and I did have to make a few custom pieces around the roof line, but this stuff cuts so easily that I was even able to use a coping saw for the little intricate parts.
So to make it a little bit interesting in this challenge, the guys and I decided that we're gonna incorporate a piece of recycled material. And my buddy Oscar has some cedar that's laying around that he took down from an old fence that we can totally use on this project. So Stella and I are gonna go pick it up. Stella! All right, she's ready, let's go. She loves her car rides. Those are free, free food for the chicken. <laughs> free ants. Good stack. We got wood. All right, let's get this stuff planed down. And guy never stops. I love it when you can take something old, clean it up a little bit, and expose its beauty again. And this was the case with the cedar fencing. All it needed was to have that top layer taken off on the planer, and it exposed some amazing old growth patterns, which is hard to find in stores these days, and is gonna look awesome with the design. Now, I bounced around a couple of ideas of how this siding should look, and because we have to include that water feature, I figured we can make them into a wave pattern on my new Nova 51 by Thunder Laser. This bad boy has a 51 by 35 inch removable cutting bed, which means that I can cut and engrave just about anything. It engraves at 1,000 millimeters per second, which is double from its competitors. And with 130 watts of power behind its laser, it cuts through this cedar like butter. But it even rips through three quarter inch plywood and even some hardwoods, which for a laser can be difficult sometimes. This was really important to me when I was researching a new laser. I had a different laser before Thunder and honestly, I hardly used it because I had a hard time cutting even some of the thinner materials, which was more frustrating than anything else. It sat there collecting dust instead of helping me make fun projects. So after learning about all the options, like the autofocus, the two-year warranty, a included exhaust fan, the chiller, and the ability to cut through thick materials, I was excited to have Thunder in my shop and finally be diving into the world of lasers. This opens up a new world of possibilities for me when it comes to making projects. I don't always want to rely on my hands to make pieces. I can put it in the Nova and go do something else while it's batching out all the siding for me. If I had to do this by hand, it would probably take me all day. But on this laser, it was done within the hour. So thank you to Thunder for supporting what I do. I'm going to have a link in the description to their website where you can learn more about all their laser options they have. And if you're looking for a new laser that can handle just about anything, I highly recommend Thunder. You won't be disappointed. Perfect. With all my pieces cut, I can start nailing them to the doghouse. And you can see that I'm putting them vertically and just butting them up to each other. This is why I had to put on that house wrap. Even though the siding is super tight, I'm still worried that water is going to get behind it and cause some damage over time. So that water barrier to keep everything nice and dry will definitely help and the pups will appreciate it. All right guys, so the dog house is coming along and uh, I love this transition. However, I'm not 100% sure how to finish this corner. I want it to be nice and clean. I don't want to put anything over it. Um, and these obviously don't line up. So what I'm thinking of doing is actually flush cutting one of these and then doing a round over on this so they kind of Know, blend together like 
you know, a wavy finger joint. So we'll try that. Next, I glued and nailed these cedar waves to the back of the door frame I made earlier and trimmed off the access over at my table saw. I really wanted to carry that cedar look to all the sides of the house and not just make it look white. So that door was a perfect place to put it. I attached it using stainless steel T-strap hinges and then ripped a few strips of cedar to trim everything out. Okay guys, so what we got going on here is we got some polycarbonate. It's pretty much like plexiglass, but it's shatterproof. I used it on plenty of projects before. I know how it looks, how to work with it. The only thing I don't know is whether or not you can bend this stuff. So what we're gonna do is set up a little jig and try to heat bend it and see if that works. So we can put it right in there. Let's go. You want windows? You want windows, how are you gonna get down? What happens when you're big and chunky? What happens then? Okay, so the reason we're bending these windows with a heat gun and not just cutting them to size is because I wanted to see if I can create a continuous window look around a 90 degree corner. And this did take some practice to get the technique right. On the first try, I had the heat too close and wasn't moving it from side to side enough and melted that corner. But after a few tries, I was able to get the right amount of heat where it was pliable enough and bent down without melting it and I got that corner that I was looking for. I also had to remove the cedar and some of the framing on the corner so that that window can fit in place without sticking out. I didn't want to remove all of it because that's structural, that's going to hold up the roof, right? But just enough where the window will sit recessed three quarters of an inch. Then I painted it black in hopes of hiding it a bit more and ripped some one inch material to act as the trim. I've been wanting to see what this looks like ever since I thought about this. We caulked them in too. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get really excited when things come together that I have never done before. And this was the case with these windows. The entire framing of this doghouse was designed around these windows working. And if it didn't, I'd be screwed but in the end, it all came together. All right, we'll let the uh, cock set up, make sure the window doesn't move, and then we're gonna put our trim on. By the next morning, the amp exterior silicone caulk from DAP had dried and I can put on the front pieces of the trim. It's made from the same one by material as the backing and ripped to about one eighth of an inch thick. I didn't want this trim to take away from the look of these windows, so I wanted it fairly thin just to accent it. With the doghouse almost completed, I started prepping for the finish and paint by sanding all the surfaces and caulking all the seams. After removing the roof for what seemed like the 100th time, I painted it and the ramps with an exterior grade paint called Ninja Black. And yeah, I got it because it sounded cool. Because, you know, this is like a ninja course for the pups. So I had to go with the ninja black. All right, so I'm ready to start finishing the wood portions of this doghouse. And just like every other project that I do for outside, it's going to get Total Boat Gleam 2.0 in a gloss. And then we're going to top coat that with their lust in a matte. And it's never failed me, so let's go. <laughs> Thank you. 
With the exterior of doghouse drying, I moved on to finishing up the roof. But before I can install the artificial turf on it, I want to add a drip edge on the back side of it. And what this does is it allows the water to drip off of the metal drip edge and not just flow over the fascia board. Then I took some leftover window flashing I had laying around and glued it to the top of that drip edge, making sure that the water actually flows over the top and not under it. And with that done, we can install that turf. And I never installed artificial turf before, but figure that the pups are going to be running all over it and digging their nails into it as they run up and down the ramps and off of the roof. So stapling just isn't going to do it. So I grabbed the tube of Thixo epoxy from Toto Boat and applied it to the edges before laying out the turf and stapling it down. And honestly, I don't know if this is the right way of doing it. I have zero experience with turf. So if you know, please let me know in the comments section below and help others that want to do this. All right, 40 gallons, 40 gallons. That should be plenty for Stanley. All right, so I decided I'm gonna make a template to go around and uh, need a piece of plywood. Since we're doing some renovations, why not steal something from here? Yeah. There we go, here's a piece. So this is actually part of our subfloor that we just recently ripped out. We gutted our entire house and have a dumpster full of useful materials, so why not use it and make the surround that's gonna go around the pool? Yep, the pool is going to be our official water feature for this challenge. I started by tracing the shape of the pool onto the recycled plywood and cut all the pieces over at my bandsaw. Then I measured the height of it minus the plywood and grabbed a couple of micro lamb cutoffs from a huge beam we're installing on the first floor to open up our living room. And honestly, I don't know if this is water resistant, I'm guessing not, but I had them on hand and I didn't want to waste them. After cutting them to size, I started attaching them to the plywood half circles using glue and brad nails. And I made the frames into two sections because it's much easier to cut them out at the bandsaw when they're smaller like that. So when it came time to connecting them, I did need to use a 2x4 between the two sections and split them between it. After testing the fit of the pool, I started laying out the cedar to glue up the top deck of the pool surround. And this used to be the cedar siding that we had on our house. We pulled it off when we were doing the renovation. And it's a little bit thicker than the fence pickets I used on the house, so it will work great for the decking boards. After the glue had set up, I took it out of the clamps and cleaned up all the glue joints with a chisel and gave it a quick planing. Cedar is a very soft wood and taking a hand plane to it, just about the best feeling in woodworking. It planes so easily and when cleaned up, it looks amazing. Then I cut out the shape with my jigsaw, routed in the slots for some LED lights and tested the fit on the frame, making sure that it overhangs by about three quarters of an inch. Then I can take some cedar strips that I had ripped to about a quarter of an inch thick and start wrapping the entire surround. Oh, and I did make a step for the pool off of camera. The height of the pool is about 16 inches and I wanted to make sure that Stanley had something to walk up on. But the process of making this step is exactly the same as the pool surround. After installing the slats and the planks on the step, I flush trimmed them with my router and temporarily taped a strip of acrylic under the step. This will serve as a offset for me as I route the step out. It also gives me a even surface for that bit bearing to ride on. I made the slats to have a slight variation of thickness, giving me more depth. And if I didn't do this, those thicknesses would be reflected into the step when routing it. Then I can remove the guide, round over all the edges, and sand everything up to 120 grit, and install the LEDs from underneath to reflect in the water. And with that, we can take this doghouse outside and let Stanley and Stella enjoy their new modern doghouse.
All right guys, so that's it. The dog house is done and Stella and Stanley finally have a place that they can call their own and get out of the sun while I'm working in the house. I did end up putting the dog house on a platform made out of treated plywood and treated lumber just to get it off of the ground and have a place to put the pool, which they haven't figured out yet. For some reason, they think it's just a giant dog bowl, but this is their dog house and I'm not gonna tell them how to enjoy it. Queen Stella has pretty much claimed the roof up here and she surveys every single day for any trespassing squirrels. And Stanley, well, he hasn't figured out the ramps yet. He's five months old, he's learning every single day, and hopefully with a little bit more practice, he'll be able to join Stella up here on Squirrel Patrol, right? So if you guys wanna build one of these for your pup, there is a link in the description below that will take you to my website where you can download the plants completely for free. And also linked in the description below is where you can vote for your favorite dog house and make a donation if you want. Again, all the proceeds are gonna go to No Dogs Left Behind. They do amazing things all over the world, saving dogs from cruelty and just from bad situations. So anything you can do would be much appreciated. We did this challenge because we love our dogs. They are part of our family. And if we can raise a little bit of awareness, maybe raise some money for a good cause, to me, that's a good day in my book. So that's it guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this experience. I gotta get home and wash her because she just rolled in something wicked and I'll see you guys next time. You stink. You stink so bad. You stink. Oh. How am I gonna put you in my car? You're riding the better truck, let's go.